Hi everybody. Today we're making sweet potato rolls. The recipe is from King Arthur. You can find it on their website for free. They recommend one of two types of yeast. You can use active dry yeast or instant yeast, also known as bread machine yeast. I have both, but I'm going to use the instant yeast. The main difference is you're going to use less of the instant yeast and more of the active dry yeast. The recipe calls for you to mix the yeast with water and milk beforehand and add it to the dry ingredients. I didn't do that because you can use instant yeast directly in the flour and the dry ingredients. You don't have to pre-mix it. But I would do that next time just because in the finished product I did end up with bits of undissolved yeast, which wasn't a problem, but it was just a visual thing. So in the mixing bowl I have two, three and a half cups of flour all-purpose flour. I'm going to add three large eggs. Next is a mixture of a quarter cup of whole milk with a quarter cup of warm water. And then I have three tablespoons of salted melted butter. I didn't have unsalted butter, that's what the recipe calls for, but it won't be a problem. It won't add too much salt to the recipe. Half a cup of mashed sweet potatoes. I cooked the sweet potato in the microwave the night before, let it cool, and then mashed it for the recipe. And then I have a quarter cup of granulated white sugar, a teaspoon of cinnamon, totally optional, but it gives it like a Thanksgiving vibe, one and a half tablespoons of instant yeast. I'm going to put it on one side of the bowl, and then I'll put the salt, one and a half teaspoons of iodized or table salt, as it's also known, on the other side of the bowl. It is a finer salt. It has a finer granules than kosher salt. You can totally use kosher salt. I keep iodized salt on hand for baking only, and I use kosher salt in my regular cooking. If you want to use kosher, do two, two to two and a half teaspoons of kosher salt. I'm going to put it on my mixer, and I'm using the paddle attachment to mix. Um, the dough hook would have a huge problem really mixing the dough. It wouldn't really, because it's such a wet slack dough, you really need to use your paddle here. You can use a wooden spoon to mix it by hand. Um, the hand mixers would probably have a hard time doing it, so I'd recommend a stand mixer or a wooden spoon. And I'm going to mix it together for five minutes. During this time, the mixture is going to become more homogenous. There's a lot of ingredients in here that need to come together, but you're also going to develop some gluten. With dinner rolls, you want a mixture of softness that's going to come from the sweet potatoes, the milk, the eggs, the butter, and you want gluten formation, which is going to come from the mixing and the resting. The softness that the fat and the eggs and the sweet potato provides is good for a dinner roll. It makes it light and fluffy, but you still need gluten to make sure that you get a nice, light, airy roll from the air bubbles. And this is after five minutes of mixing. The mixture is looking completely different. It is pretty sticky. It sticks to my spatula here. That's good. That means that it's got gluten, but this would be really hard to use right now. If you tried to make it into dinner rolls, you would just hate your life. It would just be a nightmare. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it in the refrigerator for eight hours covered. You could do it overnight, so you could make this the night before, before you go to bed. Just mix it up, cover it, and the instructions say to put it in a grease, greased bowl. I never really do that, I just leave it in the mixing bowl. It's always been fine, I can just scrape it out with a bowl scraper. Um, if you want to do the extra step, you can, but I don't think it's necessary. Um, and then during the eight hours in the refrigerator, it's going to solidify, and it'll become much easier to work with. Um, and it'll be much easier to turn into small balls for the dinner rolls. So I'm just kind of shaping it into a solid mass here, and then I'll put it covered in the refrigerator for eight hours. So the next part is after taking it out of the refrigerator, it's risen not too much, but it has risen, so you don't want it to be the same size, but it's not going to get huge. And then you're going to pat it out into a rectangle so you can divide it up. I did not flour my work surface. I recommend that you do. Um, it was a little too sticky for me. 
I could manage it, but it was kind of annoying. So just lightly flour. You don't want to add a lot of flour because then you're actually out adding more flour to your recipe and that would make the, the rolls really dense and dry. So what I'm doing is I'm forming it into a rough ball shape and then I'm taking the palm of my hand and pushing down on the ball and then going into a circular motion and curving my fingers in so that it makes kind of like a little cage. And when you twist and push down, it turns in, it, the shape that it wants to go to is a, is a ball naturally. It takes a little bit of practice. If you are putting flour on your work surface, you want to leave a little bit unfloured because you need to have a sticky tacky surface to be able to do this process. So you could put flour in one part and then just leave one little section where you're t rolling the balls unfloured. I'm putting them in 9 inch cake pans that have been sprayed with spray oil. They are non-stick. You could put it in um, like a square baking dish. What you want to do is just have one to half inch, half inch to one inch space in between them. They're going to rise and puff together. Um, and then I'm going to leave them on the counter to rise. So I have some um, baking spray and some cling film, cling film, and I'm going to put it on top and let them rise on the counter at room temperature for two hours. So a little bit, you see how big they are. They're touching. I'm going to put them in the oven now at 375 for 20 minutes. Halfway through, I'm going to rotate them so they get even baking. So I'll switch them from left to right and rotate them back to front. And you don't need to put any egg wash or anything on them because there's so much sugar in there they get p pretty brown. So these are them after they come out of the oven. I let them cool in the pan for a few minutes and then you put them on a wire rack. And this is just me pulling them apart. They have a really nice airy texture and they're nice and fluffy. Enjoy!